If the essence of the mid-1990s could be distilled into a can, it would surely be a can of Surge, the flyest drink of that bygone era. Some may remember it for its fully loaded citrusy sweetness, others for its rather deranged commercials. But tragically, it's mostly known as the drink that left us too soon. Today we're asking, whatever happened to Surge? But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History Food channel. And let us know in the comments below what other gone too soon beverages you would like to hear about next. Okay, grab your skateboard and your Green Day Dookie CD, because it's time to kickflip back to 1996. In the 1990s, Coca-Cola was looking for a way to dethrone Mountain Dew as the world's most popular citrus soda for teenage boys. Coke had already tried to outdo the Dew decades before, when they introduced Mellow Yellow to the world in 1979. But they were doomed from the start, and no guest appearance in Days of Thunder was going to fix that. Mellow Yellow just didn't have the same hyperactive, grounded in middle school energy as Mountain Dew, and we're willing to bet it never will. So if Coke wanted to compete, they needed to develop a whole new recipe. Because this was the 90s, it needed to be something cool and extreme, like a crocodile wearing sunglasses. Oh man, that was so extreme! And in 1996, they developed just the thing. They called it Mountain Dew Killer, or MDK for short. Okay, Coke, lighten up. But if Nathan Fielder's dumb Starbucks taught us anything, you have to be a little more original than that if you want to make it in this world. Enter Urge. Coca-Cola shot across the bow of a Viking ship. Why the weird analogy? Because it was initially a Norwegian exclusive. Urge was the name of MDK's first appearance on the market. It was a hit with the citrus-loving Scandinavians, and it soon found a home in Sweden and Denmark as well. It wasn't long before Urge grew even bigger still, and in 1997, Urge set sail across the ocean blue in a bid to claim Mountain Dew's territory for itself. Already well-established in America, Mountain Dew had sprung from humble Tennessee origins, where it once had a country bumpkin for a mascot and used the slogan, Mountain Dew will tickle your innards cause there's a bang in every bottle. They should bring that back, because who can resist a cola slinging bumpkin? But in 1992, PepsiCo rebranded the Dew for a cooler, more youthful audience. They introduced the slogan, Do the Dew, and started buying up ads that featured BMX bikers and skateboarders. That's rad. Mountain Dew soon became synonymous with the X Games, and it wasn't long before every cool kid in town was chugging Mountain Dew while rollerblading past the local library and giving all the books the finger. By 1997, Mountain Dew held 80% of the heavy citrus soda market. If Urge wanted to compete, they'd have to go bigger, hipper, and more extreme. So, Coke renamed the project Surge and dropped 50 million on an ad campaign for Super Bowl 31. There was one problem. Surge was already an existing product on the American market. Its trademark was owned by the Babson Bros, whose Surge Milker had been proudly milking cows across America since 1925. Rather than pursue a future in which America's preteens gulped down cartons of extreme milk while tearing up the blacktop on their Razor scooters, the Babson Bros filed a petition to stop Coke's Super Bowl ad campaign. They ended up settling with Coke for an undisclosed amount of money, and the Super Bowl was back on, with Surge's new ads ready to bombard C students everywhere. While Mountain Dew's advertising stuck mostly to established extreme sports, Coke knew that they'd have to step things up if they wanted to outdo the Dew. So, rather than relying on boring old snowboards and parachutes, Coke made up games all their own to show the extremes teenage boys would go just to get their grubby little hands on Surge. In one ad, a group of young men raced towards a bottle of Surge by rolling down a hill in metal barrels. In another, some hockey players beat the lime green pea out of a group of innocent snowmen, one of whom holds the coveted soft drink. And yet another features a violent foot race over a collection of living room furniture in the middle of the street, like an obstacle course made on a severely tight budget. Yeah, we really don't understand that last one either. Makes no sense. But nobody needed to understand it. Surge's marketing relied on the pure and utter chaos that teenagers adore. They even went as far as inventing their own words to try and make old ones more exciting. Who needs carbohydrates when you can have carbos? A word that seems to refer to the drink's high maltodextrin content. And with in-your-face slogans like Feed the Rush and Life's a scream. Coke had everything they needed to lure young millennials away from dusty old Mountain Dew and under the crisp new wing of Surge. Unfortunately for Coke, they might have taken things a bit too far. 
Surge's marketing campaign broadcast into households across America images of geared up teens wreaking havoc. But by trying to make Surge seem more extreme than Mountain Dew, Coke may have pushed the envelope of what was socially acceptable. Whoops. The message to parents was clear. Drinking Mountain Dew will make your kid pick up a skateboard and memorize every level of Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Drinking Surge, though, that'll make your kid go nuts. Reports started coming in from schools across the nation. Kids were drinking Surge at school, and they were acting like little maniacs because of it. Although, whether the kids were acting out because of the actual contents of the drink, or were merely imitating Surge's dystopian extreme marketing campaign, is unclear. But nuance can't hold a candle to hordes of angry parents. As far as they were concerned, Surge was making their kids crazy, and it had to go. Soon campaigns took off in school districts all over the country to have Surge removed from school vending machines, even though Mountain Dew was allowed to stay. Some schools even banned kids from bringing Surge onto the grounds, like it was a handle of scotch rather than a can of corn syrup and water. Any attempt to bring the black market product into the classroom would result in swift disciplinary action. But what these parents and administrators didn't seem to realize or didn't seem to care was that Mountain Dew actually had more caffeine in it than Surge by four whole milligrams. And like their kids, they had fallen for Surge's chaotic marketing, and they went after Surge regardless of the facts. In spite of the backlash, or maybe because of it, Surge had strong initial sales. In 1997, Coke sold 69 million cases of Surge, a far cry away from Mountain Dew's 605 million cases, but a good surge towards building Surge's brand into a true Dew competitor. They soon dropped Mountain Dew's market share down to 66% from its previous 80%. Sergio Zyman, Coca-Cola's chief marketing officer, and a man whose name matched the bodaciousness of Surge, was the man behind this initial success. Believed by many in his time to be a maverick of the advertising world, he had repeatedly bucked convention and had successfully rebranded Coke's products for a new generation. Wait, I thought that was a Pepsi slogan. Even though Zyman was responsible for the notorious failure of New Coke, hey, they can't all be home runs. His image in the industry remained that of the rebel through to the end. A year after Surge's launch, though, Zyman resigned from Coca-Cola for disputed reasons, because the guy behind Surge was never going to go quietly. Unfortunately, the vacuum he left behind left Surge in the lurch. Zyman was replaced by Charles S. Frenet, a man eager to return Coke to the pre-Zyman era of Coca-Cola marketing, and he didn't seem to know how to handle the youth-centered market to which Surge had tethered its brand. In 1998, under Frenet's leadership, Surge's year-over-year -year sales dropped by almost 25%. That is decidedly not radical. Coke sold under 52 million cases of Surge that year, over 17 million fewer cases than in 1997. All the while, Mountain Dew's sales only increased. Just one year later, Surge's sales numbers weren't even half of what they were in 1998. Frenette, for his part, tried to reduce the product's negative stigma with parents, but the effort was futile. Surge would never recover. Finally, in 2003, Coca-Cola discontinued the product altogether, making Surge just another name in the ranks of fallen soft drinks, like 7-Up Gold or that Pepsi Blue bullshit. Almost a decade after Surge's untimely demise, Coca-Cola tried yet again to make Mellow Yellow hip to a new generation. They fell back onto their 1990 idea of tying the product to the high-speed antics of Days of Thunder. And in 2010, Coca-Cola launched a new ad campaign that paired Mellow Yellow with America's favorite pastime, drag racing. They partnered with the National Hot Rod Association and gave away free cans of Mellow Yellow to adoring racing fans across the nation. Even though there isn't much we wouldn't do for a free can of soda, the campaign failed to make a dent in Mountain Dew's sales. And Coca-Cola has since gone back to the drawing board. But whatever happened to Surge? Could it appear on the horizon like Gandalf and restore Coke's Mountain Dew killer? In the years since Surge vanished from the market, multiple communities have popped up across the internet to put pressure on Coke to bring the product back. From SaveSurge.org to the Surge movement, people have digitally shown up by the thousands to show their support for the discontinued soft drink. In fact, the Surge movement was so successful in garnering support that they managed to raise the $4,000 needed to buy a billboard outside of Coca-Cola's Atlanta headquarters. It read, Dear Coke, we couldn't buy Surge, so we bought this billboard instead. Hmm, maybe could have invested in something with a better chance of return, like pop figures or a savings account. But the higher-ups at Coke saw this message, and they responded. More than 10 years after Surge was discontinued, Coke gave it a second shot. 
In 2014, the company announced that due to pressure from online communities, Surge was once more coming back onto the market. The announcement, made over Facebook, got over 3,000 likes and 700 comments. There was joy in the digital streets as ticker tape rained down on imaginary digital cities. Coca-Cola arranged to sell the soda exclusively through Amazon. For a mere $14, anyone could buy 12 16-ounce cans of Surge from Papa Bezos himself, and no parents or school administrators would be around this time to stop them. The anticipation was so great that the initial stock of Surge sold out in just two hours. Coke refilled the stock, and it sold out again that same day. But the resurgence was short-lived. It wasn't long before the product disappeared again. For the next few years, Surge scalpers took advantage of its absence, selling the product for jacked-up prices as rumors swirled of its official return. But in 2018, Surge reappeared once more in the most royal of places. Through an exclusive deal with Burger King, Surge briefly rented a room in Coke's freestyle soda machines across America. What's more, Burger King even gave the drink its own limited-time slushy. It's good to be king. All good things must come to an end, though, and Surge seems to have wandered off and disappeared once again. But for those of you who can't wait for Surge to show back up, there's hope. Remember Urge, the Norwegian predecessor to Surge? It never went off the market, and is still just one quick cruise line away from being yours. While it trades Surge's toxic green look for a muddy brown color, and according to some, the recipes aren't quite identical, Urge may just be the only hope for getting your Surge fix anytime soon. So until Coke decides to bring our favorite can of Shrek blood back, you'll just have to feel the urge. The urge to surge. So what do you think? Surge or Mountain Dew? Or hell, even Squirt? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're at it, check out some of these other weird history food videos.